This is the first time I've ever done this. So. Me too. Yeah. All right. There we go. Sure. We're all, all, like uh, Polsky says, we're always students, right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. How you doing tonight? How's the family? Good. Yeah. Everything's good. It's hot. It is like hot outside and I'm like running around. And, AZ. You know, it's AZ. It's, yes. <laughs> AZ heat. So it's, it's good. Everything's really, really good. And, and B-boy, B-boy Papa Scaby is uh, taking care of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm at the studio, so and you know when I have to work or do things, and I need to concentrate. Then of course I have to come into the office. So yeah. So yes, that helps. So then he's he stayed behind. Yeah. Good, good. So the studio's in Avondale, right? Yes. Okay. The studio is in Avondale, Arizona. Yep. Awesome. So that's just a uh, little west of Phoenix, a little west in, yep. is it Glendale or is it south of the 10? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember Avondale. So yeah, Avondale is, yes, we're just west of Phoenix, just literally, yeah. We're, we're like southwest of the city, basically. Okay. Yeah. It's so interesting to see, like, I, I'm trying to remember the first time I probably met you. It was probably like Cypher's Jam or something. Actually, it was the first time I met Bell Rock. And it was okay. at um, like the Phoenix Arts Center and there was something, Scooby had something going on there. Yeah. Um, and that's the first time I met Bail Rock. And then the next time I saw him was in Paris for Juice de Boo where, where he won. Yeah. Um, so it's just crazy. It's crazy to see like what he's done. Yeah. And then like just all these different people that I've met over all these years. Um, and I, I feel like we've had that connection. We haven't had a lot of time to talk before like we've seen each other at events and stuff but I was really excited I was really excited for this because I like uh I didn't grow up in AZ but um it's part of my like dance family like moving around and And there's a a pretty good pretty good scene here too yeah my gosh I I always rep I always rep AZ wherever I go but what I was gonna say is that um, from like that moment on and seeing um, just the evolution of Arizona with uh, Jukebox and uh, Electro Studio, uh, yeah. the Rise Students, the Drop, and like what you've done with students. Like I've seen it from the start, just observing yeah, and yeah. trying to help support it. And yeah. I'm just like, wow, this is so awesome what you've done. So first of all, congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of hard work, no? Yeah. <laughs> day in and day out, it's all the stuff that nobody sees. You know what I mean? The yeah. not, the not, um, just the grind that is un, the untold grind. You know what I mean? That really, yeah. that pays off and that takes that takes time. So you know, it's it's been a it's been an awesome journey. Oh my gosh! And it was a like you know. It, the studio was definitely not in my plan by any means. <laughs> really? It, I, I'm being okay. totally honest. Yeah, it wasn't. Wow. It wasn't like, you know, some people have like that. That's their dream or they want, they already know or they're planning or whatever. But um, to be honest, it, it, it really wasn't. Um, but God had a different plan. And of course, his plan is the perfect one. And so, there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. You can't argue with that, right? No, so, you can't. You can't. So, yeah, um, so, yeah, no, that that's, it, it's yeah. really amazing to see, like, um, even just even smaller studios that are still repping Juicebox, um, which is out there. Um, I, I can't even, I know there's other studios. Um, oh, I know Ep- yeah. Epic, Epic's still doing their thing. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just kind of start from the beginning. I know, like, like I said, we've, we've had like a lot of cro- paths cross, but yeah. like, we've never really like sat down, um, to like chat because um, yeah. you've done automatic response, uh, yeah. beat freaks, like groovaloos. And I feel like with me, I try to um, try to like dip into everything because I want to support everybody. Like right, right. there's, there's so many stories out there. So um, you grew up in Arizona, born and yep. raised, right? Yes. Awesome. And so uh, what was kind of like your first introduction into dance, like in general? Just dance or hip hop? Dance? dance yeah dance. we'll start with dance uh, the very oh, foundation oh <laughs> uh, dance so actually it's funny i i was telling this story just a few days ago but in short you know my my parents you know they're like the kind of a classic they're like first generation um you know mexican americans and so 
grew up pretty poor. My dad, you know, grew up in the projects, that whole deal, yeah. really try to do their best to get their, you know, their children, me yeah. and my brother and, um, you know, more opportunities and all of that. So basically at three, my mom put me straight into a dance studio to start taking dance classes and give, you know, already right there. <laughs> so, so at three, I was by no choice already kind of, you know, that was the thing to do, I guess. So yeah, so I, that was really my first intro introduction in terms of that. And, and I remained in a studio atmosphere throughout my, throughout, like, you know, that was my upbringing is Phoenix dance studios. I went to three different okay. dance studios here in Phoenix. So my foundation of dance, in terms of like dance education really came yeah. from the studios that I grew up going to. Um, but my education in terms of, you know, music and culture and soul and yeah. that came from my house, <laughs> like my parents, you know. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Hip hop was not the thing in, in our house, um, but funk and soul, I mean, my mom's like heavy Motown, heavy, you know, yep. just followed and that was the voice of that generation. And so mm -hmm. that's what, that's what I grew up hearing, listening to, loving, adopting. But then I would go to the studio and it was like, oh, that was not what was happening in the studio. But there, <laughs> that's where I was learning, you know, the techniques and the, you know, the histories and, and things like that in terms, but, but no hip hop for sure. I mean, this is like, we're talking about like early nineties, um, yeah. you know, throughout the nineties or whatnot, when hip hop, <laughs> in terms of like cultural hip hop, had yeah. not hit the organized studios yet. It was like, still like jazz or whatever. It was slowly like towards my teens, there was like slow, you know, little bit of hip hop starting to trickle into like the organized studios, I guess, in Phoenix. I'm speaking specifically okay. in terms of Phoenix. But I think that's kind of how it was though too, because I remember like even going back and watching like Mariah Carey videos, they're yeah. like doing, jazz and contemporary and then all of a yes. sudden they're doing like party dances yes, and you're like yes. but the way that they made it happen was just like right. the transition i don't see that a lot anymore you know like there was right. so it was so raw so yeah. i can understand how yeah yeah so but yeah and then i mean basically that was you know i fell in love with dance i would say i would say dance in terms of just movement music all of that when i was about 14 I think for me is when I really I took it on and I was like I want this is what I want to do before you know your parents have a huge they're like this is what you're going to do and you're good at it so we're just going to keep doing it type, type of keep thing going, you know? going. yeah yeah, yeah. You know? and then it, there does come a point where it's like you have to choose it for yourself yeah. you know what I mean so so was 14 like the first time that you saw hip-hop or you observed it or was there like a um, that, was, that was a little bit later, actually. Okay, okay. So at like 14, I was like, I'm going to dance. I don't okay. really know what I'm going to do, but I want to dance. And you I want to dance, yeah. Dance. Yeah, and then I actually didn't, I was introduced to hip hop like throughout my childhood, just from like my cousins who were in the scene. They were not b-boys. There was like the one token b-boy that I went to high school with. Like, <laughs> you know always... what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, cool. You know, That's how like, it was like, for me in San Diego. There was always yeah. that. I was like one. into I was into in sync and like but I loved like Bobby Brown and Janet Jackson. I grew up in the Motown influence from my mom, and you know I grew up in a, a my mom was single and raised five on her own. So I know like living in you know the projects and doing living certain stuff like that. And so but you get so influenced by all these different people, yep. and that that's so like that connection with you is is um, but yeah like you said at fourteen. That was around the same time too that I kind of observed there was that token b-boy and I was like dang that's dope I can't do that I'm gonna try but yeah for sure that, that was yeah. you know like late late 90s right <laughs> yes exactly yeah. there was like the one kid that did the DJ and like the one kid that you know did windmills or whatever but at th that was yep. like not my scene by any means at that time um but for me hip-hop I actually got introduced. So House, B-Boy House One from Phoenix, he's the first, first, first one. He was my first hip hop teacher. Yep. He's the one that like, was like, this is what you need to know about the culture, about the scene. Like, this is Don D. White. This is Rocksteady Crew. This is like A, B, the kind of the ABCs of hip hop. Right, right, House, right. For sure, you know, who, 
who, who laid it down for me in terms of that and how, if and you what, don't know what age was that for you? Well, that was 17. So 17. Okay. I have, a, I have a funny story. It'd be funny to hear him tell the same story. <laughs> but I love, my, I love hearing house tell stories too. <laughs> so, but my, so basically, right. I was a studio kid. He came in to sub a class. Um, okay. I was, I was a senior in high school. He came in and I'm like, who's our teacher, you know, whatever. And there's house chilling with his backpack on the floor. He comes in, he did like a straight B boy, B girl class. I had never taken, I'd never taken a class like straight breaking class ever. Okay. Um, wow. you know, especially in the studios that again, I'm telling you, it's like not today. It's like, that's what it is. That right. was not what it was. Right. So, um, but yeah, so he he slid on his head, he freestyled. I was like, what? <laughs> Whoa, what's going on? You know? Um, but yeah, and then basically a few months after, we actually both ended up making a team called the Mercury Hip Hop Squad, which is like okay. WA, WNBA, like hip hop team. Yeah. Um, a lot of people been through that, through the yes, Mercury that's, Squad. That's another kind of like, you know, whatever classic little job yeah. hip-hop job or whatever were you like first generation for mercury or because it so that or... was 2002 i don't know okay. what, there was definitely before me you know what i mean oh wow so, okay but like that's where i met lots of people that are heavy influencers in the scene you know what i mean yeah. at that time that's like on the team well like saza was on there and um <laughs> mario he he owns another studio out here too and just mario. you know lots yeah, of yeah, different yeah faces that have all gone on to continue doing awesome things too um but i but basically house you know kind of took me under his wing at that time and it was it was funny because i was couldn't freestyle right i mean i was just really young in the game and and but he couldn't count music so there was really you couldn't you couldn't freestyle no because even if you uh, I'm, i'm looking even at the footage and like just that that natural flow but uh, but maybe that's uh yeah i don't know like it looks like you just have that you know even though you've been through studio it just looks like you naturally have that freestyle flow well well i'll tell you the reason <laughs> why i was like so out to prove because that was like there's no way you could be so raw there's no way you could be so dope there's no way because you come from a studio you have this you have all this mm. training. So when I first hit the scene in the, as a B-girl and a young B-girl, and I remember even House like, dude, we, we got to really like keep you on the down low for a while because, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, because, you know what I mean? It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whoa or whatever. And But I for me, it was the music that I was li- dancing to when I would go to hip hop events or practices or whatever. I'm like, dude, this music, like this is the music that I love and I'm moves me like I just naturally had a connection to that music so I danced very differently than Mm -hmm. what I was being forced to dance to I think more so um and so that's really where I started to find my love and I think from there you fall in love with the music right yes the movement is like (laughs) oh forget it you can't stop someone from from dancing to the music that they love so yeah so yeah and then so when I hit the scene right it was I caught a lot I caught a lot of slack I mean in the beginning for sure it was like oh whatever we all have everybody yeah yeah it's it's part of the process it's like who 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 can push through it you know what i mean through all that or whatever so but yeah so i mean furious styles was a they were house you know miracles like they're they were heavy mr groove i mean those are miracles oh people like yeah get on youtube and look up miracles i remember connecting with miracles in like 2000 six i think after oh i went to my first jam ever in san francisco was polsky's mighty four jam (laughs) we drove out we drove out from idaho uh when i was going to church school out there and uh it just like i want to go to a jam i've been watching style to oaf and all these websites you know like yeah yeah and then but that miracles uh was in the finals footwork versus uh crazy legs yeah 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 Legs yep. oh, right look crazy. He's talking crap. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, no, yeah. So those, you know, so that was miracles. Like, yeah. All those different for, influences you had. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Like, you yep. know, early on. And, and I'll just tell you, like, straight up. I mean, at that time, like, you were not crossing styles at mm. all. At all. Like. It was it, just one style. It was just one style. And you really were disrespectful 
if you did other styles. It's so crazy, like, to even, for people to wow. even catch that. Because it was, for me, I came up doing a lot of different styles, you know what I mean? Mm. Not necessarily street styles, but I was pretty versatile in terms of whatever, you know? So, so there was that mentality that was like, if you're going to break, that's it. That's all you do. And you don't do anything else, you know? And that honestly kind of messed with me a little bit. At that time, I was like, yeah i don't know like i want to do other stuff and right 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 so, so you know so anyway so i had to like find my path we started automatic response kind of in okay you know in a response i guess i don't know whatever but that <laughs> the name comes from like automatic response to music like you just automatically oh, okay respond. it's like but, yeah, yeah 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 but you know and so so anyways then through that of course i i actually took a kind of a step back from breaking for a little bit I had moved okay. to and from LA um, trying to find I was like young B girl like trying to figure out you know what I mean who where I was who I was like, that's like or like 18 to 22 ish um, and then I ended up in Frisco for Mighty Four wow. um, yeah. and I saw Rocksteady smashing granted i had met legs already prior before when okay I was a little bit early which, on. which mighty four was this like uh what year um was this mighty four hold on let me get this right is that right yeah 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 it's mighty four. Oh, i'm so bad with that um <laughs> so this was uh let me see so i went to mighty four uh 10 10th well, this, anniversary this was which when, was when legs and um this was when legs and why not battled in like the final Oh, okay. It like a pop rock it, so it was, I wasn't down in Rocksteady. I got down in 2006, so maybe 2005. Could have been. And it might have been that. Legs, it might have been that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legs can help us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but basically, yeah. So I ended up kind of finding my way back into the, to the breaking scene. Ended up at that event. Um, saw Rocksteady skills. I mean, cool ski. It was like a crazy Rocksteady representation. Um, and granted, I grew, came up, obviously, like, Rocksteady was the crew, the ultimate, the, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you rep <laughs> that crew, it's like, that's it. Um, so being, seeing Rocksteady, like, live and in person and just super dope, I'm like, dude, that's the crew that I want to get down with, straight that's up. Dope. Like, yeah, and then, um, yeah. So, so did, so was it, was it like an automatic response? You're like, oh, I'm going to go battle legs right now to be in the crew <laughs> or like so I, how, how was that transition i mean it's it obviously that i was trying to get down in terms literally like get down in the ciphers with them you know what i mean like you have to it's not like yeah. hi can i just you know can i just get down in your crew like so, <laughs> here's five bucks <laughs> yeah it's like you you gotta show i mean it's just like anything you gotta prove yep. who you are you have to show and gain respect from everybody not i mean yes you want to gain respect from everybody in the crew but but truly legs really at that time i had only been breaking about four years and um legs really took me under his wing it was like i know you have so much potential and i'm gonna catch a lot of slack but i you know what i mean like i'm you're down i'm gonna put you down and yeah, and yeah, yeah. that's really where it was like the what is it called? Like, I don't know how you want to say it, but where the real ch test stuff came from, because, you know, now you're in a crew that you have all this legacy, you have all this, you know, everyone that's going to you, everyone that's current, like, and now <laughs> you're the young one that has so much, you have big shoes to fill, you know what I mean? So for yeah. me, it was like challenge accepted. Um, let's do it. You know what I mean? And right. I wanted to prove to everybody that was like, oh, you come from a studio, there's no way you could rep a crew as raw and you know what I mean like rock steady you know what I mean so it was like I'm like oh heck yeah and I'll battle you too like <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I'm like, what? so but yeah so I mean that's like kind of in a quick quick nutshell but yeah so legs legs has been my biggest mentor I got down to rock steady in 2006 and you know legs wiggles I mean those those have been my teachers <laughs> since. Obviously, everybody, but you know. Yeah, he just said she she won Wiggles over with rebuilt real B girl skills. So. Yeah, Wiggles. The whole thing, like even like in Rocksteady, right? It's it's like because um, you know people come and go, and it is what it is. Thing people fall out, and people, whatever. You yeah, know, for sure. That, yeah, it, life it happens. It, yeah, things yes. happen. Yeah. And you know there was like at the time too 
as you know, there was a, a big trend and it still continues and it is what it is, but people were repping lots of crews and you're repping lots of crews <laughs> too, like more for like an investment. Yo, let's go win this battle. And we don't right. the, like the crew loyalty. You know what I mean? It was, so we were really trying to reestablish like rock, you know what I mean? All of that, just like that crew family and, and whatnot. But, um, but anyways, so legs would say, you know, if you're here 10 years, and if Wiggles, if you gain Wiggles respect, then you're in basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, you know, and so, yeah, so I mean, that was years in, but yeah, that's a huge, it was a huge honor too for him <laughs> to go from like him not even wanting to talk or talk to you, you know, to then being like, no, you have my respect. That's like huge from that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Does, so, does he does Wiggles offer you like a golden stick of gum? <laughs> like he's like this gum represents like <laughs> is it, you know because he's always chewing gum I you know? mean, he's always like... it, it's it's so funny too you know what's crazy <laughs> Wiggs, i'm gonna shout you out I, no but like because wiggles is like super he's a very loving guy like you know he you, is you've worked with him met him anyone who's worked with him in the in the scene is like you know what i mean he's very like yes yeah you know very <laughs> respectful um but when it came to crew stuff, he was brutal, man. It was because that was his, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like when it has to deal with crew stuff, it's like he would just call it like it is, like, you know, you this or, or whatever, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. family stuff that nobody hears about or needs to hear about. You just, it is what it is. I mean, but it's cool to, it's cool to like con connect it. So, like, um, before, uh, before I had my, my health accident, uh, Wiggles was one of the last people I interviewed when we did our like live streams on Facebook and stuff. And um, it was just interesting. It's always been interesting to like cross paths and to hear about just New York and like just how he goes about life. And it's funny like that he's in Vegas. It's almost like there's like still part like Rocksteady East, which is like pretty much, you know, Rocksteady Puerto Rico now, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. New York. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, shout out to Legs for doing all that work in Puerto Rico. Yeah. It's awesome, you know, yeah. um, and Puerto, Puerto Rock Steady, of course. But then there's like, it's like Rock Steady, Arizona and Vegas, you know. <laughs> so for sure. yeah. it, it was interesting to like talk to Wiggles just about uh, coming out to Vegas and still having that mentality. And um, yeah. obviously you were accepted into the crew, so you passed the test and that that yeah, that yeah. that New York that Bronx mentality of of what they went through, okay. not like they were trying to create something. They just did it, you know. And yep. so yeah, and I, and I know for me, like you know, because even well, and I guess I I say this a lot to my students too. But a lot of yes, I did get to dance with Wiggles and Legs and Pop, and you know, like which I'm so super, super blessed in terms of like shows and performances and rehearsals and yeah. moments that like, you know, are, you know, very far and few between. I mean, that's, it's like, as we get older that it just, it's, we slow, it changes. It's, yeah. um, <laughs> but I know for me, like most of what I took away and a lot, yes, we danced together. Cool. I, we learned, I learned some steps, but it's really like the mentality, the knowledge, the, you know, uh, that of just being with them, hanging with them, you know, that is like what you don't get, you know, it's like, sure, right. pay, come and take a class and pay, you know, take a pay for a class or whatever. But it's like the knowledge that you get from a teacher is not inside the classroom like that, you know? Yeah. I mean? And so I'm, you know, that's what I really have embraced and have, you know, or I'm really thankful for, of course. So, yeah. For sure.